Hello, my name is Morgan. I am a fifth year PhD candidate in theater and performance studies. I'm writing my dissertation on juggling, and I use Zettelkasten in Obsidian to take my notes for my PhD. If you've never heard of Zettelkasten or Obsidian, you might want to watch my previous video on the topic, or just stick around because it's going to become pretty obvious pretty quickly. <laughs> Before I get into the content of this video, I just wanted to thank all of you for all of your wonderful comments on my previous video and all of your support. I did not expect that video to be so helpful to so many people and I have enjoyed replying to all of your comments and helping you out further and also getting tips and tricks from you. I feel so honored to be able to get such specific tips on my own Zettelkasten process. My process is changing all of the time, which I think will already become obvious in this second video that I'm making on the topic. And if you have any suggestions or requests for future videos about note-taking, knowledge management, obsidian, Zettelkasten, etc., doing a PhD, then please let me know in the comments section. I will look into making those videos in the future. One thing that I know some viewers were curious about after my previous video was how I organize my knowledge within obsidian. I have gotten to a point in my own Zettelkasten now that there is so much knowledge, so many notes and thoughts and ideas that it's getting a bit unwieldy. I need some kind of entry point into that knowledge for it to be useful for me. I've gotten to the point that Nick Milo from the Linking Your Thinking YouTube account calls the mental squeeze point, and this is when your notes get to be so numerous and messy that they become overwhelming, and working in your Zettelkasten is no longer fun, but a bit stressful. So this video is going to be about different ways you can organize within your obsidian to make your notes continue to be valuable to you even as they grow in number. Like I said, my dissertation is on juggling. So I take a lot of notes about juggling, probably a third at least, maybe a half of the notes within my Zettelkasten are about juggling or circus in some way. And it's gotten to the point that I don't even remember what I've already written about juggling and circus, nor do I know where to enter that content within my Zettelkasten to start working on my dissertation. If I'm going to write in depth about juggling, I need to know the different areas that my knowledge is pooling within the topic of juggling. So there are three different tools that I'm going to talk about today that you can use to organize your content within Obsidian. Ultimately, I only use one of these tools to organize my content, and the other two I use for more practical purposes. They are firstly, folders, secondly, tags, and thirdly, structure notes, or what Nick Milo has called maps of content. So let's talk first about folders. Your vault in Obsidian, where all of your notes are kept, is actually just a folder on your computer. And this folder works like any other folder on your computer. You can have subfolders within it. So you can actually use folders to organize your content within Obsidian. So one way I could organize all of my juggling notes is by taking them out of my main folder and putting them into a subfolder called juggling. I could then even distribute them further in sub sub folders named after smaller topics within juggling, like juggling as a sport, juggling as an art, juggling as a hobby, juggling and circus, and I can just start dividing these notes up. But I don't do that for two main reasons. Firstly, that's a very arbitrary split between thoughts. Many of my notes about juggling also relate to other notes within my obsidian. If I talk about juggling as a hobby, that is going to connect to skateboarding as a hobby. And skateboarding as a hobby isn't gonna be in my juggling folder, but they are still very much related ideas. So some thought in the juggling folder would be relevant to thought outside of the folder and vice versa. So it's this arbitrary split. Where would I end up drawing the line between juggling related notes and not juggling related notes? Secondly, my issue with this is that the notes are kind of still a mess, unless I do some very systematic nested folder formatting. So instead I use folders as a practical tool to set aside notes and files that are otherwise cluttering up my obsidian. So let's actually head into my obsidian now and see how I do use folders. 
I've created a sample vault here just so that I can show you how these things are working within my obsidian without the intense clutter that has become my Zettelkasten. On the left hand side you can see all of my notes like normal and then at the top you can see I have two folders here, one called files and one called sources. Sources are just normal notes but these are kind of my bibliographic notes. So for instance when I read Sanka Aaron's book How to Take Smart Notes, which I highly recommend if you're interested in Zettelkasten, I created this note with the MLA citation as a source location so that when I make notes about this book, I can reference it within those notes. So all of my sources of thought are up in this sources area. And you can connect between notes in your subfolders and notes in your main folder, but one note can only be within one folder. So because these are a specific type of note that is different from my typical notes with my knowledge in it, I just want to keep them up here so that they can be hidden and I can just see all of my thought in this left hand side. The other folder has files in it. So this is where I keep all of my PDFs and JPEGs that I might be referencing within my Zettelkasten. But again, I don't want them cluttering up all of my actual knowledge. So for instance, this PDF is actually associated with one of the readings here. So this text, I actually have a PDF for it. And if I control and hover over the name of the PDF within this note, the PDF pops up right here. Also, as somebody commented in my previous video, if I put an exclamation point in front of the name of this PDF file, I actually get the PDF embedded within this note. Here is the source, the reading, and look, there it is as a PDF right inside the note where I'm taking notes on the PDF. So that might be useful to some of you. So that's how I use folders to organize and hide content within my Obsidian so that it doesn't get too cluttered. The next way that I organize within my Obsidian is through tags. Tags work much the same in Obsidian as they do on Twitter. They just group many things around a single topic. So one thing that I could do to organize all of my information about juggling is simply make a tag called hashtag juggling and then put that tag in every single note that references juggling. Tags only group notes. They are not a note themselves that can link back and forth the same way that the double square bracketed links can. I don't use tags to group content. I find that I can just as easily search for topics within my Zettelkasten in the search bar. And I plan on having hundreds and hundreds of notes about juggling. So having a tag grouping 400 notes that are all about juggling actually doesn't give me that much information about the notes. And yes, I could start a nested tag system like hashtag juggling slash sport, hashtag juggling slash art, but me making a tag about content feels like me making an assumption that I know better than my organic connections within Zettelkasten how thoughts should be connected to each other. I don't really want any type of connection within my Zettelkasten that doesn't emerge organically from the knowledge itself. That said, I do use tags, again, for more practical purposes. So let's go back into Obsidian and I'll show you how that works. There's two ways that you can find what tags you have within your Obsidian. First of all, you can go to the search bar and like it says right here, you can search for tag colon and then it'll pop up with the tags that you do have. So there, I have three tags, one that is a house emoji, one that is a pencil emoji, and one that is a linked chain emoji. Cool. There is a second way that you can find tags and if you're going to use tags, I recommend doing this. If you go to the bottom left hand corner to settings and then you go to core plugins and then scroll down, you'll see there's a tag pane. So this is actually a pane that will appear and it'll show you all your tags all the time. So turn that on and that is going to appear in the upper right hand corner with this little hashtag symbol. And there they are again, the pencil, the chain, and the house. And the little number to the right of the tag tells you how many notes have used that tag. So the pencil tag and the link tag for me tell me things that I still need to do within my Zettelkasten. They're task reminders for me. So the pencil means I still need to make notes within this 
note. And if I click on the pencil, it's going to show me on the left-hand side which notes have the pencil. For the most part, I have put the pencil tag inside of sources that I still need to read and take notes on. One example is this book, Vibrant Matter by Jane Bennett. I read it years ago, but because I read it before my Zettelkasten, I don't have notes on it in my Zettelkasten, but I do have other things that have linked to this book because it is so important to my research. So I just have the pencil there to remind me that I still need to add notes about this book specifically into my Zettelkasten. So let's go to the next one then, the link. The link means I still need to connect this note. So it means that I have already taken notes, but I haven't interconnected those ideas within my Zettelkasten. And if I click on the link, you can see that I have two notes in here that still need to be connected to the rest of my Zettelkasten. This one actually says hashtag link between the existing connections and the rest of Zettelkasten. I've actually already created some notes about this, but these notes aren't connected to other notes in my Zettelkasten. The other one is reminding me that I've already taken a ton of notes on this book, but I have not put them anywhere else. I need to start turning these into individual atomic thoughts, and then I need to connect them to the rest of my Zettelkasten. So the notes have been made, they just haven't been connected anywhere. They're still sitting in this original note. And then if we look back at the tag pane again, I have one more type of tag. And this is what's going to lead us into structure notes because I have a little house here because a house is a structure. And that's telling me that everything with the hashtag house is a structure note. Structure notes are what I'm using to tell myself where my information is. So instead of grouping notes with tags, I'm grouping them within another note that is the topic that all of my notes fall under. So this one that I have in here is called knowledge. It's got the house at the top reminding me that this is a structure note. It's not a typical note where it has an atomic thought in it. This is structuring other ideas that I've had. I realized as I was taking notes that I talk a lot about knowledge and ways of knowing. And I realized that I was probably going to want to sort through that information so that it was easy for me to find different things about knowledge in one place. This operates kind of like a table of contents in a book telling you where things are in that book or even more so like an index at the back of a book so that you can search through different ideas and find where they exist in that book. That's what your structure note is doing for you. So this is how I've used structure notes. After I had a bunch of notes about knowledge, I put them all into this note called knowledge. And then I started to see where themes were emerging within those notes. So one area that I'm clearly interested in when it comes to knowledge is how knowledge is constructed. Another area I'm really interested in is collaborative ways of knowing and how knowledge is interconnected and a collective practice. So here's all of the notes that are related to that topic within knowledge the transformative nature of knowledge, metaphors for knowing. So for instance, we often use sight as a metaphor for knowing. We say, oh, I see what you're saying. And we often use grasping as a metaphor for understanding something as in, I didn't quite catch what you were saying, or it went over my head as in, I didn't grasp it. So there's a lot of different notes on metaphors for knowing within my Zettelkasten. They might not all be connected to each other, Maybe the idea of understanding is grasping doesn't directly connect to sight as a metaphor for knowledge, but I still wanted to put them somewhere so that they were kind of together as, an, as a theme within this larger topic of knowledge. And if this section on metaphors for knowing gets really big, then I might consider actually creating another structure note to structure metaphors for knowing. In that case, I would actually go and put square brackets maybe around metaphors for knowing, and then go into metaphors for knowing, put a hashtag house so that I know this is a structure note, and then start structuring within here. So I've been using a triple pound sign space to make the heading, and then maybe my first heading is site metaphors. 
And then I would list all of the notes that are about using the metaphor of sight for knowing. And then maybe my next one is feeling metaphors. And then I put all of the notes that are related to touch and feeling as a way of knowing into the feeling metaphors section. So in this way, if we go back to the main knowledge structure note, I am creating just this mass of notes. I'm just letting my knowledge and my thinking emerge naturally. And then after that knowledge exists and I can see where the thought is pooling, then I can start to organize it. The organization is emerging naturally in a bottom up way from a mass of notes instead of top down by me deciding that I'm going to categorize information and then start taking notes within those categories, because that would be putting sort of a restriction on what I'm letting myself think about and create notes about. I want Want to create notes on anything and everything that interests me or I find important. And then once all of that interesting, important stuff exists, and it might be surprising where that knowledge is pooling, then I can start to collect it into different areas that I see emerging naturally from my note taking. You very well might not have a structure note about knowledge. That might not be a topic that has actually become a focus within your obsidian. Other structure notes that I have include juggling, education and pedagogy, writing, because these are all things that I'm interested in and I've noticed that I'm interested in because there's this accumulation of notes to the point that they become confusing and overwhelming to deal with without some kind of structure for organizing them. And now, when I go to write about knowledge or ways of knowing, I have an entry point. I'm gonna go to my structure note on knowledge and decide which area of knowledge and knowledge making and knowledge dissemination I wanna focus on today. So that was a really quick introduction to different methods of organization within your Zettelkasten in Obsidian. I hope it was helpful. If there are any specific questions that you have about folders, tags, or structure notes that you want to ask me in the comments, I would be happy to help you out. I've only just gotten to the point in my Zettelkasten that I have enough knowledge that it's getting overwhelming and I need to start organizing it. I am certain that I will find new methods of organization and my structure notes will develop over time as I accumulate more and more notes and need more methods of organization for those notes. Again, thank you to everyone who saw my previous video and subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you're enjoying this content, I encourage you to subscribe. I'm going to continue putting out videos on this topic. Some upcoming ones I want to do are writing an article with and in your Zettelkasten, how to incorporate notes on fiction within your Zettelkasten, and how to write notes in your own words, some tips and tricks. So if any of that content sounds interesting to you, then please stick around for my future videos. And I really look forward to having some conversations with you in the comments section. Let me know if you have any structure notes and what those topics are that you're needing to find structure for within your Zettelkasten. I'm so curious. I'll see you in another video soon, everybody.